What's going on guys, it is Pangino here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the heavily updated Warzone Season 5 FPS Increase Guide. Give you guys the latest and greatest techniques for achieving the very best FPS possible, reducing any stuttering you might be experiencing, and reducing input lag. Regardless of your system specs, all the way from ultra low end, all the way to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware, you should be seeing some phenomenal results from following along with this video. Unlike my previous guide, there is nothing to download with inside of this video, it's simple steps in which everyone can follow along with simply and easily. So let's jump straight on into the optimizations. First of all guys, if you do enjoy this video, and are happy with the results, please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously. Alongside leaving your results, questions, queries, or any tips you might have for improving FPS in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy content like this, please do consider pressing the subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever a video goes live on the channel. So jumping straight on into the optimizations, and one of the best things you can do to boost your FPS with inside of Season 5 is to actually ensure that you're running on the latest update of Windows 10. This is incredibly vital to do as the latest updates of Windows 10 are actually highly optimized towards gaming performance. They set many of the options in which we had to set in the previous Warzone video automatically so your operating system is better at detecting your system specs and the settings within inside of Windows to ensure you get the best performance. To see if there is a Windows update available for you, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows key, type in WinVer just like so, then press enter. We're looking for version 2004. If your version is less than 2004, you should definitely look into updating Windows. To do this it's very simple and easy to do, press OK, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows key once again, then type in check for updates just like so. Then go ahead and press enter. With inside of the Windows update tab, click on the check for updates button. After a few short moments you'll then be notified of any Windows updates that might be available. And if you do see that option make sure to download and install that now and you'll keep all of your files and data. Come back to this video and continue on. Alternatively you can navigate into the description down below and manually install this update yourself by going to the Windows 10 update link, then go over to the Windows 10 May 2020 update, click update now, download the utility, open it up, it will then update your Windows 10 for you and get you up and running. Proceeding on from there we can then optimize the Battle.net launcher itself. Once the launcher opens up navigate over to the top left hand side to the Blizzard logo, click on the drop down menu, then go to settings. We want to ensure that allow multiple instances of Battle.net is unchecked. We then want to go to when I launch a game, you want to set this to exit battle.net completely. We can then proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom and ensure that use browser hardware acceleration when available is unchecked as well. We can then go ahead and press done. From here, we can apply some optimizations to the game applications itself by navigating over to the options menu, then going down to show in Explorer. Then click on the Call of Duty Modern Warfare folder, scroll down until you find the Modern Warfare Launcher and Modern Warfare application. Start off with Modern Warfare Launcher, right click, go to properties, then navigate over to the compatibility tab, ensure that disable full screen optimizations has been checked, go down to change our DPI, click the override high DPI scaling behavior, press OK, apply and OK. We're then going to repeat that optimization for the Modern Warfare client, so right click, properties, compatibility, disable full screen, change our DPI, override high DPI, OK, apply and OK. You can then go ahead and exit out of the folder and minimize the Battle.net launcher. From here, we can then go ahead and ensure that we're running on the correct Windows power plans for the best performance with inside of your PCs, depending on whether you're running on an AMD Ryzen based system or an Intel based system. For this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows key and type in power space plan. With inside of here, go to edit power plan, then go up to the navigation bar at the top, click on power options, go to show additional power plans with inside of here. Now, for those of you running on an Intel based system, there are going to be two power plans in which I'd recommend that you use. Either use the high performance power plan with inside of here already, or alternatively we can use the ultimate performance power plan with inside of here. This is a power plan on which we can manually unlock with inside of Windows and will enhance performance on heavy workloads. And if you guys are running on an AMD Ryzen based system, you want to be going with the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan. It should look something like this. If you cannot find the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan, simply navigate into the description down below and click on the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan link. You'll then be brought to this driver download page. Simply navigate down to the manual search, click on chipsets, click on AMD socket AM4. Then within inside of here, you simply need to click on the motherboard revision in which you are using. Then click on submit, then go down to Windows 10 64 bit edition, go to the AMD chipset drivers, download these drivers and install them to your PC. You'll then be able to see the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan. And that is the power plan you should be using as it is simply the best power plan for Ryzen and processors. For those of you running on Intel based systems and you wish to go with the ultimate performance power plan, you can do this by navigating into the description down below, clicking on the power plan command. The command will look similar to this. Copy this entire command, press copy, then navigate down to the bottom left hand side of Windows, click on the Windows key, type in CMD, run the command prompt as an administrator, select yes, then within side of here, simply go and press Ctrl and V on your keyboard and press Enter. You then move up with Power Scheme GUID Ultimate Performance. You then go ahead and exit out, go back over to the Power Options tab within side of Windows, go up to the navigation bar, click on Refresh, and you'll then be seeing the Ultimate Performance Power Plan within side of here. You can change power plans at any time, it's very simple and easy to do. Just go over to the selectable dot next to it, click the selectable dot, that power plan is now enabled. This now brings us over to the part of the video where we're going to be booting into the game and actually going through all of our in-game settings to further tune them and optimize them for our system specs. 
Before we do this, it's incredibly vital to ensure that you guys are running on the latest graphics card drivers, not only because they are the most optimized for Warzone and will allow you to get the best FPS possible, but with the latest update to Windows 10, which is 2004, you will also need the latest graphics card drivers, as pairing those two together can unlock some features with inside of Windows in which you cannot access without having both of the latest drivers. To update your GPU drivers, it's very simple and easy to do regardless of the age, spec, make or model of your GPU. Just simply right click on your desktop, you should be seeing the NVIDIA control panel or AMD Radeon settings panel. With that information, navigate into the description down below and click on the corresponding link for whether you're using an NVIDIA GeForce card or AMD Radeon card. For NVIDIA GeForce users, go to the automatic driver updates utility, select download now, download this utility, open it up, it will then detect and install the latest graphics card driver for your system. For you AMD Radeon users, it's a very similar process. Go to auto detect and install Radeon graphics for Windows, download now, download the program, open it up, Again, this will detect and install the latest graphics card driver for you and get you up and running. It's recommended to perform a quick system restart by navigating to the bottom left hand side, clicking on the Windows key, going over to the power option, right clicking and selecting restart. We then need to ensure that we're running on the best settings for those GPU control panels. This is very simple, easy and safe to do. Right click on your desktop once again, either open into the Nvidia control panel or AMD Radeon panel. We're gonna start off by going through the Nvidia settings. For these, navigate to the top left hand side, go to adjust image settings with preview, ensure that the middle option with inside of here is checked, then go down to apply, then navigate over to manage 3D settings on the left hand side. With inside of here for the best results, I'd recommend pausing the video, copying all of the settings shown, resuming the video as I scroll down, pausing again, copying all of these settings, and again just continue to pause the video until you've copied all of the settings available. Once you've got all of those settings set up, the only ones I might change depending on your system specs and to experiment around with yourselves would be going to low latency mode, trying on instead of ultra. For some lower end system specs, you might find better results using on. And navigating down to the OpenGL rendering GPU, you will need to set this drop down menu to your graphics card as you might not be using an RTX 2080. We can then navigate down to the bottom right hand side and apply those changes. Then navigating over to the top left hand side to configure surround and physics. Go to the physics settings, go to the drop down menu and set this to your graphics card. Once again, apply that setting. Then navigating over to the left hand side to adjust desktop size and position. Go ahead and click on your main monitor. With inside of here, we'll then have the option for aspect ratio, full screen and no scaling. We're going to be setting this up depending on how we have our game set up. If you guys use any custom resolutions or lower end resolutions than your monitor's native, I'd recommend keeping this set to full screen, meaning if you have a 1080p monitor and you play at 1080p with inside of the game, you want to be setting this to no scaling for the best performance possible, as GPU scaling is not needed in this instance and will simply be taking up resources. Once that's then been set up, navigate to the bottom right hand side once again and press apply. And for those of you running on AMD Radeon graphics cards, go ahead and right click on your desktop, open up the AMD Radeon software panel, go up to the gaming tab, go to games, then go to global graphics. To start off with inside of here, it's recommended to have Radeon anti-lag enabled. We can then go down to Radeon image sharpening, enabling this and setting it to around about 30 to 50%. Experiment around with this as it's mainly personal preference, but it's definitely recommended to have enabled. Radeon chill should be enabled if you're on an ultra low end laptop that has overheating issues or a desktop which has overheating issues. Otherwise, disable this. Wait for vertical refresh should be switched to always off. Go down to the advanced section. Anti-aliasing should be set to use application settings anti-aliasing method to be set to multi-sampling, morphological anti-aliasing disabled, anastropic filtering disabled, texture filtering quality, performance, surface format optimization should be enabled, tessellation mode should be switched to AMD optimized, OpenGL triple buffering disabled. We're going to go ahead and exit out of our AMD Radeon settings and continue on. After we've applied the optimal settings for our graphics cards, we can then navigate down to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, this time typing in GPU settings with inside of Windows and click on the graphics settings tab. This is the tab that features some of the brand new Windows optimizations which I was talking about earlier. Now, if your system specs support it and you've updated your version of Windows and your GPU drivers, for some of you watching, you should have the option for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling with inside of here. If you do have this option, ensure that you go over to the flicker switch and turn this to the on position, as this allows the graphics card to independently manage its own VRAM pool, which can drastically reduce latency and improve performance on nearly every single game. Once you guys have got that set on, regardless if you have that option available to you or not, we're also going to be going down to the graphics performance preference tab, clicking on browse. With inside of here, we then need to navigate over to this PC, then navigating up to the top right hand side and simply searching for Modern Warfare just like so. It can take a few minutes depending on how many drives you have in your PC and how quick your PC is. With inside of here, simply click on the application, click on Add. With inside of here, navigate down to the Options menu and ensure that High Performance has been selected at the bottom. Press Save and we can then exit out of the Graphics Settings tab. Whilst we're going through all of the GPU settings and optimizations, I'm going to take this opportunity to quickly shout out my Ultimate GPU Overclocking Guide, which can be seen on screen now and can be accessed using the card on the top right hand side of the screen or in the description down below, you'll be finding a link to go to this video. And for any of you guys who have a little bit of extra time on your hands and you're looking to get the best FPS possible from your PC without having to spend a penny, that video will teach you guys how to simply and easily overclock your graphics card. It's incredibly safe to do, and you can be seeing additional FPS gains for around about
about 5 to 25% depending on where you are in the map, alongside how to set your GPU fans manually to make sure that your GPU temperatures are nice and low and you can maintain better performance for longer. First of all, for any of you that use Discord whilst playing the game, it's recommended to navigate with inside of Discord, navigate down to the bottom left hand side to your user settings cog. First of all, going over to the overlay tab on the left hand side and ensure that enable in-game overlay is unchecked. You should not be using the Discord overlay with inside of game as this can cause slowdowns and I'd recommend turning it off for the best FPS possible. Secondly, we can then navigate down to the appearance tab with inside of Discord on the left hand side, scroll all the way down to the bottom and ensure that hardware acceleration is disabled. Now this is only recommended to do this for medium end to high end PCs, as on low end PCs this can cause issues and you might lag with inside of Discord whilst talking to people, but for most people I'd recommend coming to hardware acceleration and turning this off. Pressing OK, Discord will then be restarted and hardware acceleration will then be disabled. We can then apply a very quick optimization which comes in the form of system maintenance. For this navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the windows button, type in percent %temp% percent, just like so, then press enter. But inside of you will then be bought inside of the windows local temp folder which is basically the ultimate dump for all Windows apps and programs. So with inside of here we're simply going to be highlighting and selecting every single folder and file with inside of here, right clicking and selecting delete. You'll then be met with this prompt, click do this for all current items then hit skip. That prompt might come up a couple more times, simply repeat those steps and once you guys are done you'll then be left with a few folders and files with inside of here. Everything else was an excess dump file, caching file simply taking up space and resources on your PC. Before booting into the game it's recommended to come to the bottom right hand side, click on the task icon tray and start closing out of all programs you no longer need running in the background whilst playing Warzone. For instance you should not be needing stuff like Steam running in the background whilst you're playing games, you can close out of your web browser, close out of Spotify. This now leads us on to one of the most important optimizations with inside of this entire video and I recommend everyone watching to to apply this step. For this we actually need to download the ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner program and which can be found in the description down below. Simply navigate down to the ISLC download link. For this you can see a brief explanation and demonstration as to what this program does, but I'll go into further detail and explain what this does in a moment. For now we're simply going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to the official download here link. Click on this, you'll then see the ISLC has then been downloaded. Simply put the file onto your desktop. At this point, double click on the file, select extract. You'll then be met with a folder in your desktop with an identical name. Go inside of the folder, you'll then be met with the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner or ISLC. This is a simple two-in-one optimization program. The first part of the program helps you keep a reserved pool of RAM in the background, freeing up resources as you play. The second part of the program actually features the timer resolution program, and which I've recommended in my FPS guides for years. This simple program allows you to reduce latency with inside of the game, hardware you have installed to your system, and the operating system to allow for a much snappier and responsive feeling game alongside boosting FPS. Double click on the application, select yes. As you can see my standby list is currently using 11 gigabytes of RAM on my system. Before starting this program it does require a minor bit of setup and for this we're going to be setting our first box to 1024. The second box then needs to be set to half of your total system memory and you can see this at the top side of the screen here. As you can see I have 32,000 megabytes or 32 gigabytes of RAM so roughly half of that for me is going to be 16,000. So half the number, then navigate over to the right hand side to enable custom time resolution, go over to the editable box, remove the value within side of here and set this to 0.50 then use the delete key to remove the other values. Then go down to ISLC polling rate. For most systems, set this to 1000. For high-end gaming PCs, set this to 500. Then we can navigate up to the top to purge standby list. That's then going to clean out your standby list in the background. As you can see, I've now cleaned 11 gigabytes of used RAM just by pressing that button. Then go ahead to the bottom right hand side, click on start, minimize the program so that constantly runs in the background whilst you're playing. I'm going to be giving you guys a very quick optimization for you guys running on the laptop. To do this, it's recommended to have a HDMI plugged into the laptop or whichever display out you have available in the laptop, have it plugged into an external monitor. Then what you'll simply do is follow the on-screen directions found here to disable the laptop screen so the laptop screen is completely blacked out and the laptop is then completely displayed on a second monitor. You will find that you'll be getting better FPS using this step on almost every single laptop out there. And all there is left to do now is to simply boot into the game and go through our in-game settings. Upon booting into the game, navigate down to the bottom left hand side to the options menu, then navigating over to the graphics tab. But inside of here we can then go down to our display mode. For those of you running on low to medium end systems, go with full screen. For anyone running on a medium end to high end system, try out full screen borderless or full screen extended windowed. We can then navigate down to one of the most important settings within inside of this entire settings panel for reaching our desired level of FPS. This is going to be going down to the render resolution option. For most of you watching, you're going to have this set to 100%. On the right hand side of the screen now you'll be seeing some recommended values in which you should really try out for the best FPS possible. For me, I play at 2560 by 1440p and I like to have my render resolution set to anywhere between 80 and 85%. Setting this down to 85% alone can increase my FPS from around about 15 to 25% depending on where I am in the map. With very very minimal visual loss. Now this option is completely down to your personal preference in terms of how much visual fidelity you're willing to lose, as
as the lower this number is set, the better your FPS is going to be. If you're happy with how the game looks, fantastic, leave the value. If you don't like how the game looks, bump it up just ever so slightly, press apply, and keep going back and forth between the game, seeing how your FPS is and seeing how the visual fidelity is, and finding your fine balance and setting that up to you. We can then never get down to sync every frame, this should be disabled for everyone, then going down to custom frame rate limit, setting this to custom, then going to the advanced tab. For gameplay, I like to go all the way up to 300. We can then go down to menu custom frame rate, I like to set this all the way down to 30, and out of focus should be set all the way down to 5. We can then go ahead and collapse that. Nvidia highlights should be disabled for the best FPS possible. This now brings us down to the details and textures tab. Now for those of you running on low-end gaming PCs to medium-end gaming PCs and you want the best FPS possible, it's recommended to set all of the following settings to the lowest settings possible, as that will be giving you guys the best FPS. But for those of you running on sort of medium-end systems to high-end systems, I'm going to be going through the best settings possible for visual fidelity, competitive advantage, and also boosting FPS, as setting all of the settings to the lowest possible on higher end PCs can actually give you less FPS. So for medium end to high end PCs, set your texture resolution to normal, texture filter anisotropic should be set to low, particle quality should be set to high, bullet impacts and sprays I'd recommend keeping disabled, tessellation disabled, streaming quality low, shadow map resolution low, cache spot shadow should be enabled, cache sun shadow should be enabled, particle lighting I'd recommend keeping set to high, DirectX ray tracing should be disabled even if this feature is available to you as this will drastically decrease your FPS. Ambient occlusion should also be disabled. Screen space reflections disabled then navigating down to anti-aliasing. If you guys do not like how sharp and jaggy the game looks after applying these settings, set this to SMAA one times. Otherwise, for the best FPS, set this to off. Depth of field should be switched to off. Filmic strength should be set all the way up to one. World motion blur disabled. Weapon motion blur disabled. Film grain all the way down to zero. Once all of your settings are complete, navigate to the bottom left-hand side and press apply. We can then navigate up to the top left-hand side to the keyboard and mouse tab. For this, make sure that mouse acceleration is set all the way down to zero. Mouse filtering is all the way down to zero and mouse smooth is also disabled. Last but not least we can then navigate over to the general tab, with inside of here I'd recommend going to skip introduction movie and set this to enabled, then simply scrolling down to the dismemberant and gore effects and also disabling these for the best FPS. Once you guys have done that we've then successfully optimized and set up all of our in-game settings and there you guys have it, that is the updated ultimate FPS increase guide for Warzone Season 5. Again guys if you have enjoyed this video please leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously, alongside leaving any results, questions, queries or suggestions for content in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy this content, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever a video goes live on my channel. Thank you very much for watching, I've been Panjano, and I'll see you in the next one.